Welcome to the 13th episode of the Don't Sing Podcast. Today I have Rafael Hidalgo. He is a ultra runner, father, and just a person obsessed with self-improvement. Um, I want to get deeper into his story, but before we get to all the running and stuff, let's just start off on where you grew up. Yeah, sure. So as you say, my name is Raphael. I actually was born in Switzerland, uh, but grew up in France from a British mother and Colombian father. So I'm a bit of a person of the world. Um, yeah. All right. So growing up in Switzerland, what, what was that like? What's the culture in Switzerland like? France and Switzerland, they're quite, uh, quite similar uh, in terms of, uh, of culture. Um, so now I can probably compare it to the Bahamas because I'm, I'm based in the Bahamas. Uh, I'd say mm. it's, uh, you know, Switzerland's a nice and safe, uh, safe country, uh, but it's, it's pretty, uh, pretty boring on the, on the social <laughs> side. People are not as open as, uh, say, uh, Latin America or the Caribbean, uh, when people are much more, uh, much more open, but Switzerland does have the mountains. Uh, it has a yeah. pretty awesome, uh, landscape and, uh, a great, uh, great infrastructure for families. So, uh, you can't, you can't win them all. Yeah. You get some, you lose some, um, so growing up as a kid, were you an athletic kid? Like, was sports or athletic endeavors always a part of your life? No, actually, it, uh, it wasn't and definitely not, uh, not running. Uh, I, I used to play some, uh, some football or, or soccer for those who uh, are based yeah. in the U.S. So I played a lot of that, but I hated running, especially when the coach used to tell me I had to run around <laughs> the pitch, you know, to, to warm up. That was something I just uh, found to, totally pointless. So uh, I did some sports, but uh, nowhere near to the extent uh, I'm doing now. Interesting. So um, would you say growing up, were you uh, one of those kids that uh, – like school or were you a kid that was more like standoffish about it oh yeah that's a that's a big story yeah no i was uh, i definitely didn't like school i wasn't good at school i was um uh the black sheep uh at school uh bullied as well at school yeah, yeah. Was, uh, not supported by the uh, by the teachers the problem was is that i was uh, considered a, a foreigner uh, within the, okay. uh, the school system uh, back in the days there were a few foreigners so i was uh, i was the odd one out so uh, easy to pick on um, dyslexic as well so that doesn't help academically uh, either so i wasn't necessarily the the smartest uh, kid uh, at school um so that was a great way for teachers to to pick on me and, and others as well to to make fun of me so it was a tough uh tough childhood in that uh in that respect um it was yeah it wasn't the at school it wasn't the happiest moments of my life that's for sure um so uh, yeah uh but it seems like you've overcome adversity and transformed into the person that you wanted to be because you've done some amazing feats that i could not ever see myself doing um can you explain what ultra running is yeah so ultra running is uh, running races uh, which are of a distance greater than a marathon so that would be the 26.2 miles or uh, 40 uh, 42 kilometers uh, so that's uh, that's what is considered ultra running and i've been doing races of uh, 100 kilometers to 100 uh, 100 miles uh, basically uh, yeah, you don't. It's not a stage race, so you really run from end to end without uh, without stopping, except for for eating, mm. uh, and 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 you just uh, you know complete the course uh, often with some elevation. So you have to climb up Ooh. some mountains, mountain passes. So uh, uh, the distance is not only the, the only difficulty. Climbing the uh, the passes, which can be you know accumulation of nearly you know between three thousand and the latest race I did was ten thousand meters or thirty three thousand nice. meters accumulated climbing and it can take up to 40 odd hours to, to wow. complete. Oof. Oof, so two nights without day. sleep <laughs> yeah yeah wow so uh, you said you grew up not really um being that into running specifically so what was your first interaction with competitive running i think it was uh probably six years ago um i like nature and, and the mountains i was out with my family uh in um in the mountains in switzerland and i saw this uh 
awesome race with people, you know, all equipped with their gears, poles, backpack, yeah, yeah. Uh, and stuff running around the the mountain. I said, wow, that's that like looks like a very cool adventure, and I love adventures, so I liked hiking. So I said, next year I'll sign up for this uh, this race, and uh, it actually turned out to be uh, a, a short ultra race, but it was uh, forty six kilometers and uh, two thousand five for a semi marathon uh, before, and wow. I just trained on a treadmill. So I turned up on the day of the event and uh, I suffered big time, man. I, I, I finished the race, but I was cramping and I was like, "This, I'm never going to finish this race. And I finished amongst the last, uh, but I finished the race and it took me, I think uh, it was seven or eight hours or yeah, eight and a half hours, something like that to climb up the mountain and, and run that distance. So that's when I started running, did that race for several years and then got into more seriously as from covid uh, going into actually competitive races and, and, and longer distances and uh, higher altitudes of, of climbs, etc. So going back to that first race you did when you just train on the treadmill and then you just show up on the day, can you speak on like how important uh, the preparation stage is for these kind of bouts? Yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, that's uh, for me, the, the running is also a metaphor for life, right? I mean, uh, as you say, <laughs> The, the race is one thing it's uh, just one day or two days whatever it might be but it's all the work and preparation which you have to put in before and especially the sacrifices you have to uh, you have to do to be able to to reach your your goal or your dream and uh, for that race yeah I, I i trained every day for an hour on the on the treadmill it's probably one wasn't the best training because i should have been running outside but nevertheless it did take uh, every lunchtime, uh, there was no lunch breaks or you know nice dinners or whatever. It was just training, 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 training to be able to be ready for that uh, for that race, and that was just uh, an appetizer compared to to what I had to endure for the uh, for the next races I did uh, uh, in the later years. So when you're preparing for a race, I know it's um, you, you're climbing elevations of up over a mile. So what are some of the challenges or hardest parts of the race that one might not think going in beforehand definitely uh the altitude itself uh, if you're not uh used to uh, walking or running at high altitudes that can be an issue because it's thin air up there so as from you know 2000 or 2500 meters it starts to get uh, pretty uh, pretty difficult to 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 make any effort at those uh, those altitudes Another issue is uh, digestive issues. Uh, it never, it never crossed my mind before I went into these longer distances. But uh, the stomach can play some nasty games on you uh, as it as you push it to its limit, and each person's limit is different. But uh, when you reach that limit, you you're not able to eat anymore. You're not able to drink uh, as easily anymore, and 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 you lose energy, and and that's when it kills your uh, your race because you need to be fueled up uh, constantly to be able to do those races. And for the longer distances, those which take you over a day, um, the difficulty is the night. Uh, so you're running at night. Yeah. Uh, you've just got a bubble of light uh, guiding you through. You don't see anything around you. You're on your own uh, in the middle of the mountains, which is which is great. But for some people, it can be pretty pretty daunting as well. Uh, and my latest race where you're actually doing two consecutive nights without sleeping, that second night is absolutely uh, incredible. Uh, very, very difficult. It's just sleepwalking. You have uh, hallucinations. Uh, your mind just tells you to give up all the time, and something else is there driving you. Uh, driving. Yeah, that's remarkable that uh, the body can push through those types of situations, even when the mind is telling you no. You just keep going. When you're twenty hours, twenty five hours deep in a race, what are you telling yourself? Like, what's your mind state like? Yeah, my mind is telling me, dude, just give up. And they say, you know, it's telling you, look at that guy having a rest on the side of the, the trail. Just do the same. Lay down, shut your eyes, just take it easy. And, uh, and you've got to find something uh, deeper to be able to, to push, you, uh, push you forward. So, for, you know, you need a real uh, dream, a purpose, uh, something much more profound that is, is pushing you to brush aside those thoughts of, uh, of giving up. Uh, and it becomes uh, much more spiritual in a sense. Uh, you really, uh, yeah, it's, it, it becomes uh, a force which is difficult to identify, but it's, it wakes up a, or it ignites a flame within you. Uh, and that flame is so powerful that it just, uh, you know, discards any physical fatigue you might have uh, and it brushes off all those ideas of, uh, of giving up because there's something greater out there to, to be achieved. And, and it means so much to you that it just pushes you, uh, pushes you forward.
Speaking on the spiritual aspect of running, how has running in and of itself changed your life in maybe other aspects? Like, what have you gained from doing these races? Oh, yeah, it definitely transformed me. Uh, as I was mentioning uh, at the beginning, for me, it's a, it's a metaphor for life. You know, life has its ups and downs. Life is difficult. Life is not a constant t- state of utopia, you know, where happiness is, uh, is, is just constant. I learned the importance of uh, setting yourself uh, a goal. Uh, and, and striving for that goal because in the end happiness is not when you actually reach that goal or when I pass that finish line the happiness is uh, being able to see yourself progress towards that goal you have little milestones along the uh, along the journey towards that race you were asking me about the preparation well during that preparation you set yourself little milestones along the way you know I need to to do 50 kilometers 100 kilometers I need to complete this preparation race I need to do this strength training I need to reach that level of uh, uh, I don't know what kind of uh, physical indicator as I progress uh, towards it. And as you see yourself reaching those milestones, it's, uh, it's, uh, you, you have um, uh, bout, bouts of uh, dopamine spikes, uh, which give you uh-huh. a sense of pleasure and happiness. And I think that's where the happiness really lies, is that seeing yourself moving forward towards a valued goal. So I really believe that what I learned is, is being able to set yourself uh, self-imposed challenges uh that uh that build you because in the end if we're not doing anything and staying stagnant in life just sitting there you know thinking that happiness is just uh having the mai tais on the beach uh that's not going to improve yeah. you you're not going to learn anything you're not going to discover who you really are and during those races i really discovered who i am and force of character is sets you apart so to come back to what we were discussing at the beginning you know that i wasn't good at school uh i was bullied uh academically i wasn't great but I had something which others didn't have, and that was the force of character, the determination, the discipline, um, and the dedication to, a, to reach a goal. So even if you're not smarter than the others, you can outwork them. And that anybody can do as long as you know why you're doing it and you have a purpose that you're going towards. You know, I'd studied for different things. People, it took them, you know, 100 hours. For me, it would take me 500 hours. So I would, I would work five times more than the others to be able to, to reach that, uh, that goal. No, this is what the uh, ultra races uh, taught me. You'll face difficulties, you'll push through those difficulties, and you and I know I can push through those difficulties, just like in life. And as you you impose yourself those self initiated challenges, you grow, you become stronger. And when you face those challenges in your daily life, you'll be able to confront them, uh, reminiscent of those experiences you had that you self initiated yourself. And then when you find a challenge in the life that you haven't self-initiated, you'll find that strength to be able to overcome it because it's just a, a temporary traverse of the desert and you'll get to the other side. You know, yeah. you'll find that oasis and you'll, and you, and you'll, you know, you'll strive. Definitely. Um, do your children run as well? Do I what? Sorry? Do your children run as well? No, my children don't run at the moment, uh, <laughs> but uh, but I also started running for them as well. I mean, I wanted to uh, to to pass on the values, the values of hard work and dedication, and to show them that to reach a goal, a valued goal, you need to work hard, and things don't come easy. Uh, I mean, someone said once you need uh, ten thousand hours of work to become an expert at something. So it's not by sitting down and. Uh, waiting for it to come magically into you that it's uh, it's going to happen you really got to put that effort and and work hard and that's what i try and teach them the same with the schoolwork uh we might not be the smartest kid in the in the in the in the classroom we might not have the highest iq uh but what we have for us is uh you know dedication that force of character and outworking anyone in the room and that can make the difference and i've seen a lot of my friends you know who are Back in the days, they were super smart and they caught things so quickly at, uh, in class. But in the end, they didn't do much of their life at all. You know, they sort of disintegrated and just went on with a, a very boring life and they're not very happy with it. But yet they have all the uh, intellectual tools to succeed, but they don't have that, that force of character and that willingness to, to progress and push themselves because as soon as they find a difficulty, they give up. And the problem is yeah. because they were so smart when they were kids, they never had any difficulties. So they were never trained to right. actually confront difficulties. So when they were older and they were faced with the first disappointment, they're like, oh, you know what? It's not worth it. I'll just give up. But kids who have faced difficulty when they're young or people who've self-imposed themselves uh, challenges and who've learned to, to, to lose and to get up and uh, try again and to confront those challenges have succeeded a lot more than those who are naturally gifted for whatever they were doing. Completely. 
right, like you said earlier, running being a metaphor for life, just that can apply to basically any thing you want to master in life. Just having that determination and that drive to get 1% better every day is crucial for people to understand because it's it's like life is a race. You have to take your time and you have to have that want, but then you also have to have that discipline because motivation is very fleeting, as I'm sure you know, and sometimes you don't want to get up. Sometimes you don't want to train. Sometimes you don't want to get out the bed. So just having that underlying goal and that purpose can push you farther than your limits can ever imagine. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, I mean, the yeah. number of times I was waking up uh, in the morning, you know, five o'clock, it's raining, it's cold out there. And you're like, you know what, I'll just stay in bed. And I tell myself, the moment you least want to do something is the moment you most need to go out there and do it. Because it's true, when I get back from that run, I'm like, oh, man, that felt good. I overcame my my that little voice in me to tell me that was telling me not to do it. And I went out there and I and I crushed it, you know, and it's a little victory, little victories yeah. every day, which which keep you uh, keep you going. Yeah, I'm sure you're a great role model and example of a person who may have an ordinary, just an ordinary base, just a, just an average man that can do extraordinary things when their mind is applied. And that is a lesson for every human being, because we are all born with different levels of skill and talents that we're born with but everyone is capable of reaching greatness it's it's how you apply it it's how you treat every single day um so um I'm, i know that you ran in the um the bahamas um yep the bahamas being such a beautiful place um what are some of the most like amazing sights you've seen as you've been running in adventuring um i mean definitely the sea <laughs> for me that's uh that's been a that's been something very different to what i've been used to in the in the mountains in in france or italy or switzerland so the bahamas being uh, an island and, and being able to offer those those incredible uh, sea views and transparent and turquoise uh, waters you know white sands uh, soft white sands and uh, beautiful sunshine most of the most of the year it's something which is uh it's also pretty uh, pretty inspiring when you go when you go out running and it makes it life life easier as well in the morning not that i'm looking for anything yeah. easy but it's it's definitely easier than getting up uh, in in switzerland in the cold and the rain here at least uh, even if it's raining it's pretty warm yeah beautiful 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 place uh what are some of your goals going forward with your running and just any uh life goals you have in general going forward yeah i think for me um Having achieved one of my dreams, which was to do this uh, this race called the UTMB, which is the Ultra Trail du Mont Blanc, which is uh, probably one of the most difficult races in the world to get into and also to to complete, uh, hundred miles going from France, uh, Italy, and Switzerland uh, all the way around the Mont Blanc Massif, which is uh, pretty epic, and 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 it became my my goal uh, for for quite a few years. Uh, it's true. I was asking myself, you know, what's the next uh, what's the next adventure? And I think, you know, it's this, it's speaking to people, it's being on the podcast, it's sharing that adventure, sharing what I've learned along this uh, journey, which I'm continuing uh, at the moment, I'm going to do more races uh, in, in the US ultra races. Uh, because I think these ultra races are a great way of, of um, digging deep into ourselves, you know, on our daily basis, uh, it's impossible to really de dig deep into ourselves in the comfort of our chair, you know, with a drink in our hand and the warmth of our homes. But when you're really, you know, 16 hours deep into a race and you're broken and you want to give up and, you know, you got all these black thoughts, dark thoughts going through your mind, you learn a lot about yourself and your character. And um, and from the from my race at UTMB and Ultra Tour du Mont Blanc, it, I, I really learned a lot about myself. And I want to convey to you know people on anywhere in the world that we all have potential encapsulated in our DNA that we don't even know exists, but it's there and it's just waiting to be expressed. And the only way you can express it is to go out of your comfort zone, go out there, have adventures, uh, set goals, uh, have a purpose, have aspirations, test yourself, fail, 
And that's when you really discover who you really are and what you're made of. And you'll be very surprised what you'll, what you'll discover along, uh, along the way. And I think too few people in these days uh, think about happiness as what I described earlier, you know, just having a, a mojito on the, on, the, on the beach and not doing anything. And, and it's quite interesting because uh, some psychologists uh, back in the past uh, were talking about, you know, what would the world be if uh, uh, the world was a constant state of utopia where people could just uh, have their ke eat cake all day and uh, continue uh, busying uh, themselves with the continuation of, uh, of life. Well, at some point, you know, a human will, 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 will wake up and say, you know, uh, I'm just uh, going to create havoc just for the hell of it, you know, just to, to make something exciting just to, to yeah so that something different happens because in the end we're all you know very curious creatures we want to see what happens if we step outside of our comfort zone if we step out of uh, what is the the norm and i think uh, human beings are made for uh, for adventure and we need to go out there and find our own respective adventures and and unfold our own uh, own myths so that's what's sort of motivating me going forward is to continue those ultra races learn more about myself and share those learnings as I go along. Fascinating. Um, I would like to know a little bit about uh, your diet. Like what um, do you constrict yourself to a diet when you're preparing for these races or are you just uh, making sure that you're eating the right things in general? Uh, usually I, I, I just stick to eating well in general. I try to avoid too many carbohydrates, so I don't uh, fuel up uh, daily on the pasta or uh, too many levels of bread or, uh, or rice or that kind of stuff. So I usually stick to, to meat, uh, to chicken, uh, fish, salad most of the time. And then when I get up close to a race, then I will start uh, fueling up on carbs. So I'll start eating a lot more rice and pasta and bread that kind of stuff uh, to start getting the, the, the body prepared for the, uh, for the effort, which is, uh, which is upcoming. And obviously, I, I usually drink only water um, and have the occasional drink from, from time to time, but uh, on, a, on a very rare occasion. Um, what are like some strategies you uh, employ when you're starting these races? Like, I'm trying to visualize what it looks like, like when the first, when the gun is shot and everyone goes from the starting line, like is everybody in a full sprint going trying to get as far as they can as quick as possible or is pace something that's very very important yeah now pace is extremely important but the problem that a lot of us runners have is that with the excitement at the start everybody runs much faster than they uh they should do so i always fall in that trap uh running well, you run much slower than you would in a training run. So you, when you start off, you feel like, okay, I'm, I'm not running that fast. But when you start looking at your pace and the heart rate, you're like, holy smokes, I'm going way faster than I should be at this point. And it's, it's yeah. got me in several races already that I've been going out uh, way too fast at the start and, uh, and then paid the price uh, later on. And it's, uh, it's quite interesting to see the difference in strategy, you know, between the ultra races and more recently here in the Bahamas, I've been doing more shorter races like uh, marathons and uh, half marathons and uh, and in both cases I, I always start out too fast and then i pay the price in the second uh, uh, second stage of the race like in the last uh, race i did the, in the marathon i was running fourth overall out of 83 runners and in the last 10 kilometers i lost uh, two positions because i just went out too fast and uh, and then was completely destroyed in the last uh, 10 kilometers so i got I got past, so it's a, it's a bit of a lesson for life as well, you know. As you said, it's a, it's a race, but it's it's not a sprint; it's a marathon. So you need to yeah. start out slow and 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 then work progressively as as you go along your uh, your course. What kind of uh, shoes do you like to use? Like, what's your favorite shoe to run in, and what's an important <clears throat> thing to have as a running shoe? What are the most important things? Yeah, it's uh, it depends if you're doing uh, ultra trail races, so uh, in the mountains, because the terrain is much uh, more different to marathons, which are which are on roads. So for the marathon on roads, uh, I use uh, two different types of shoes. Uh, for the races, I use uh, Nike. So there's the Nike Vapor Vaporfly Three, which is a which has a carbon plate in it which is super fast uh but it's not very durable so i only use it uh, for races or fast very fast uh, training sessions otherwise for the marathon on road for the preparation training i use the hocker 
I use the Hocker Rincon 3 and the Hocker Mac 5, which, uh, which are a bit more durable. Uh, and the Mac 5 is a little faster than the Rincon 3. Uh, Rincon 3 is a little bit more comfortable than the Mac 5. So each one has its advantages and disadvantages. And then for the ultra trail running, I use a uh, Hocker brand as well. And I use the Speedgoat uh, 5, which is a great grip because you want uh, incredible grip for those uh, slippery uh, trails you uh, you encounter in the mountains. And that's my definite go-to uh, shoe for those races. Nice. I know you said that you got into this because you had a sense of adventure that you wanted to pursue and you wanted to get out of your comfort zone. Um, outside of running, what other countries or places have you just visited just to explore? Um, well, I was pretty lucky and fortunate that uh, my parents back in the days used to work for the United Nations. So we got uh, to, to visit quite a few uh, places when uh, we got home leave. So I went, uh, you know, I discovered the United States as well a lot uh, as we flew through to go to Colombia to, to go back to my father's uh, family. So the U.S. has been always a big uh, big place i've always loved uh visiting and uh i know pretty much you know the east coast west coast and the center of the states because uh another thing which is uh one of my passions is to chase uh chase tornadoes so i'm a storm oh, wow. chaser so i do that every month of may with uh with some friends so we've uh been all through texas oklahoma kansas nebraska uh south dakota north dakota i mean you 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 name any wow. state in the center of the states we've we've driven across it uh chasing thunderstorms and that uh, comes back to the theme of adventure you know uh going out of your comfort zone uh discovering places you'd never have thought you would discover if it wasn't for the thunderstorms uh you know confronting mother nature and its its power as well is is something which uh which you know humbles you um and i've really enjoyed those uh those adventures uh beyond the more traditional holiday destinations that i've been able to visit like argentina or colombia europe i mean i've been or most places, uh, Spain, Italy, France, Switzerland, the U and um, yeah, where else have I been? Dubai, uh, the UAE, uh, Russia, Ukraine. Um, so I've I've seen quite a. I've been fortunate enough to to see a lot of places, and I think uh, that's another element I, I practice on a daily basis is is gratefulness to be able to 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 experience all these different uh, adventures and uh, see different uh, ways of living, different cultures. Uh, which uh, helped me grow as well uh, and my view of the world uh, to see, you know, how I can become a better person. Fascinating. How did you get into storm chasing? That's, I mean, I live in Ohio. <laughs> I've never seen a tornado in my life. So I can only imagine just the sheer, like, just humbling experience of seeing something like a tornado. How did you get into that? Yeah, my mom uh, worked for the World Meteorological Organization, which is one of the UN uh, organizations, and uh, she loved uh, thunderstorms. So when I was a kid, we used to go out and watch thunderstorms together. And then in 1997, the film Twister came out, and uh, that yeah. caught on to me big time. And I was like, wow, I really want to do that when I'm bigger. So I uh, actually studied to, to become uh, to go and study univers uh, meteorology university. Uh, it didn't pan out uh, the way uh, I wanted to because I didn't have the grades either. So coming back to the theme <laughs> of academic uh, <laughs> issues, so I didn't yeah. have the grades to be able to do meteorology. But uh, despite that, the passion remains. And thanks to the uh, technology and the progress of technology, now you have access to all the data that uh, scientists used to have you know, 20 years ago with uh, government funded uh, uh, infrastructure. Well, now you just have it in your in your mobile phone. So with a bit of um, weather training, uh, if you learn the basics, then you can actually use whatever is publicly available to do uh, actual storm chasing like the professional scientists used to do 25 years ago. So we just need a laptop, uh, internet connection, the right uh, programs to, to get the right information then uh, interpret the information and drive towards where you think the thunderstorm is going to happen. And then when it uh, happens, target the right thunderstorm and hope that uh, you're yeah. in the right place at the right time when the uh, tornado occurs. It's a bit like a cool. treasure hunt. Yeah, <laughs> that sounds cool. Super cool. Uh, what are some of the gnarliest tornadoes you've seen? How close have you gotten to a tornado? Actually, we when was it in twenty twenty two in Texas? Uh, we were probably a little bit less than a mile away from a pretty wide tornado, which was occurring in the uh, in a field, uh, beautifully 
a you know, wide, uh, dark, uh, gnarly tornado which was spinning in the spinning uh, in the field and that was with lightning and thunder roaring in the background uh the winds as well blowing uh it's pretty pretty intense experience uh to say the least that's yeah. uh that's pretty scary as well you're a man of very many experiences and uh i assume you you love the adrenaline rush of just <laughs> life uh just the different experiences and um different heights that life can take you um do you have any like are you aware of um that just that thirst for adrenaline and how do you like go about chasing that on a daily basis because i know people that love uh adrenaline rushes they're just seeking that that higher peak and that bigger push to see what level they can go to next so how do you uh quench that thirst on a day-to-day -day basis yeah, I think it comes back to what I was mentioning uh, before. I think uh, there's one. I don't think I'm I'm looking for the adrenaline spike per se, but what I'll mm -hmm. enjoy is that happiness I'm experiencing as I get closer to that adrenaline peak. So it's that anticipation. So just the time that I'm waiting towards, you know, uh, getting to go and do tornado chasing is something that I enjoy because I'm looking at the weather maps. I'm starting to try and forecast, you know, is it going to be a good season? I'm trying to uh, get some information uh, or, or new material or, or instruments that could help us uh, on the adventure, you know, booking the flights, uh, booking the car, yeah. uh, talking with my friends. It's all that build up of excitement, which, which generates the happiness because in the end, I mean, when we see the tornado, yeah, it's definitely incredible moments, but it's all the, 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 the ramp up towards that moment, which makes that moment so, so special um yeah. despite the fact that it's a it's an adrenaline rush uh, per se I, otherwise if i was just chasing that i would be you know jumping out of planes or doing bungee yeah. jumping every day and <laughs> and, and it becomes right. a drug for sure uh, for some people uh it, it's probably an end in and of itself but i don't think it's the most healthy way of living a life just uh surfing on that adrenaline rush because i mean in the end uh, that's how you get it when you take drugs or when you get drunk or uh, yeah. when you have sex every night with uh, someone different. I mean, it's it's very fleeting and it's it's temporary. You have that spike in that moment and then when it's over, then you feel depressed because you need it again. Uh, and that's mm -hmm. an unhealthy way of, of living a life. But if you have a grander purpose towards which you're, you're, you're working and it's a long-term plan, uh, and you have all these little milestones along the way and you work towards them, that, that's when you really get that happiness and you learn and you grow and you, you, you live a healthy life. Yeah, so it's the process for you that you yeah. have fallen in love with. Just, I mean, and that also transfers to other aspects of life, like the running, just falling in love with that preparation, the, the, the process, the learning, the uh, analyzing, all those things. I think those are the things that, if you learn to like them and learn to get finding not an addiction in the end result, but an addiction to the process and to getting better and just improving your um, preparation, I think that's what takes people very, very far in life is getting the preparation down, getting the the training, the whatever it is that may be that's leading up to that final climax, just the the all the steps you have to take in between because those are the things that most people find the most grueling are the things that take time and the things that you know take your discipline and effort to accomplish those middle parts but those are the parts that at the end of the day you remember you know and make the end moment so much more sweeter yeah absolutely i keep telling myself if it's not difficult it's not worth it indeed yes so what are some um things that you want people to learn from you your story and that they could take with them and apply to their life in general for me the clear learnings is if you want a good life in the long term you got to do the difficult things in the short term uh, that's as as easy as that set yourself a, a goal a dream uh, dream big believe big think big and then execute on that uh, on that uh, on that plan, and you know uh, impose yourself self initiated challenges. Get out of your comfort zone. Um, 
don't be afraid. Uh, push yourself. You need to uh, take on these challenges to to grow your your person. So for me, it's uh, it's taking on that adventure of uh, of your life. Uh, happiness is the process of uh, reaching your your goals and aspirations, and do it for the for the right reasons as well. Uh, take on that responsibility. First of all, the responsibility for yourself. I think that's the that's the biggest uh, biggest thing. You know, look after your your future self. Don't sit in front of you know the video games or the you know the drink at the bar. Uh, think about yourself tomorrow. Look after that person because that's the most important uh, person, and also your family, your community, and having a grander purpose of that sort gives you that energy to um, grind through the pain when you have difficult times in those milestones to reach your your defined goal. Um, everybody has it uh, tough, uh, so life cannot be just happiness uh, constantly or a state of utopia constantly. It'll have its ups and downs and you need to prepare yourself for it, and that's how you prepare for it. Indeed. I think this is a great message to not only put out, and it's honestly, uh, it's, it's funny. Today is uh, Kobe Bryant Day. I think this yeah. message is... Um, just embodies him as a person as well just you know going through difficult times embracing the difficulties embracing the process all things that he taught as well i i think it was uh it was very coincidental to have you on today a very determined mentality and that's a great message to give out to the people of the world especially nowadays when we're very we're at our most distracted point i believe in human history and uh repeating that message of being able to accomplish great things one step at a time, one day at a time. And um, also the message of looking forward and doing the work to make sure your self tomorrow will be in better hands. Absolutely. Yeah. I think that's a beautiful message. Um, Where can the people find you and follow your story and see all the things that you're up to? Yeah, I'm on uh, YouTube. I have a YouTube channel. So it's uh, Rafael Hidalgo. You can just uh, search it up. You should uh, find all my videos there. I'm on Instagram as well as uh, Rafael Hidalgo Runner, I think it is, or Rafael Eduardo Hidalgo. And I'm on Facebook as well as uh, Rafael Hidalgo Runner. So you can find me in, in different uh, social media. Nice. It's been uh, a fantastic chat with you. Great time. Um, I hope we had a chance to talk again about more running stuff, more traveling stuff. Um, you've been a great guest, and I wish you the best of luck in all your future runs and endeavors. Thanks, Noah. It's fantastic being on here, and uh, hi to all your uh, your listeners. Thank you, man. I'm sure they'll very much appreciate your message. Um, I hope you have a great rest of your year, and I hope you have more successful runs as you go forward. Thanks, Noah. All the best. Take care. Definitely. Thank you. You too. I'm talking about genuine peace, the kind of peace that makes life on Earth Bottom line, there were no weapons of mass destruction. Totally unjustified and brutal invasion of Iraq. I mean, of Ukraine. A new world order. A new world order can emerge. A new era. No, don't clap, man. I got more hands. Hillary, our demons. Killing peace in our time. Most of us still want to run for birth. Peace in all time. All time.